Hi everybody, Kara's here, <laughs> and I'm in a very windy field of high grass. Check it out. I hope that it'll show itself to you. <laughs> and we are in Arizona. Just got here yesterday morning. I actually drove eight hours from... Where were we last? Um... <laughs> Oh, New Mexico! <laughs> Down here to Arizona, and Tony and I had a good exchange. He packed the car and I slept, and then I drove, and then he unpacked the car, because I do really like driving in the middle of the night where there's no one on the road, and it's just me and my coffee and my music. It's good times. So now, in beautiful Arizona, about an hour from the Mexico border, thinking about possibly going down there for a little bit after this. We'll see what manifests. And this video is about redefining the fabric of reality. And this is still fully forming. It's still in process, so I might not have all of the concepts exactly correct, but I will pass it on to you as best as I can because I've been instructed to do that immediately. Okay, so when you think about reality, it is like a fabric. It's made up of, it's an experience, right? Uh, it's super windy, so I'm just going to stop talking when the wind comes up and let it blow. <laughs> see those mountains back there? Often when you see natural formations that seem black, like pitch black, like these amazingly craggy mountains here, they are entrances into the underworld. And so if you're a multi-D person, you like to run around and fiddle with stuff the way that I and my friends do, <laughs> then that means that it's a portal where you can get down there. Or if you're not into the whole, let's hang out with the angels and the demons and the elementals and make everybody be friends and have awesomeness on all dimensions, and you're more a personal process kind of person, then that means that you can access your own underworld and it means you're probably going to do some shadow work. So duly noted universe, got that probably what's going to be happening during this next two weeks while I'm here in Arizona. Okay, so fabric of creation. When you think about fabric, what it is, it are these woven strands of something, right? For with, with the clothes we wear, it can be natural fibers, it can be something from an animal, it can be something from a plant, it can be something from a lab, like synthetic material. And when you think about the experience of a life, and I'm not so much talking about consensus reality here, I'm talking about your reality, your experiences, your life. It's a fabric woven of experiences, beliefs, rules, understandings, and some of them are things that were already on the game board when you began. So several years ago, it was probably about 10 years ago when I was undergoing the latter stages of my spiritual awakening, I remember having this conversation with my father on the phone about what was possible. If we create our own reality, then what is it? Could we just, you know, defy gravity and fly and da da da? And now I know the answer to that is, well, yes. If you can, if you can really get your mind out of that paradigm, then yeah, because gravity is not what we think it is. Anyway. At the time, I thought, no, because we are incarnated on this game board, so there are certain rules of the game board which you just kind of are born with. And while that is true to an extent, once you realize that they're breakable, then they're breakable. <laughs> once you realize you have a choice, you do, and that goes for anything. Anything. Okay, moving on. You who were supposed to get that got it, I think. So, the reality that you live in is made up of beliefs about rules, about people, about you, yourself, about what you're capable of, what you deserve, and the type of realm of experiences that can happen for you. At any given time, we're dealing with maybe five or six, for most people, possible reality streams. Sometimes they narrow down to one or two, sometimes they expand to a lot more, and we come to a time of decision making, which is what right now is. This year and these past few years have been full of purging, of getting rid of stuff that you no longer need, of, of learning what you're made of and what you want to be and what you want to experience and that reality is a lot more fluid than we thought and a lot more things are possible than we thought. So now we're yet at another time of testing our merit and I don't mean compared to other people or good or bad, it's just 
What are you made of? What can you create? What can you construct in your energy field? Because the thing about the reality matrix, the fabric of creation, the fabric of reality, is that it is made of beliefs. Some things that are more or less physical, but most of what makes up our reality is not physical. Our reality is made up of this network of beliefs and vibrations that then matter sticks to. So how much in alignment with your ideal existence can you hold in your vibrational field. And so that means your words, your thoughts, your feelings. And what most people are really good at doing is thinking about stuff they don't want to happen and then making plans to avoid it. Unfortunately, that does not usually work. <laughs> and if you're a law of attraction person, then you know it's whatever you're thinking about is what makes your scaffolding, which is what you're really used to. And at this point, we're coming to a point of creation deliberately and this is not my theory, it's one that I heard back when 2012 hadn't yet happened yet, the December 21st date, and it was that the reason the calendar didn't continue was not that the world ended, well, a world ended, but it was because it was conscious choice time, and no one living thousands of years ago could predict what we were going to do. And so what's happening now is realities are splitting off. You're probably noticing that you may be in touch with new people and out of touch with people that you used to really love. You just don't resonate with them anymore. It's likely that your choices in entertainment are changing. Really think about what it is that you're entertaining yourself with, too. And because... I don't want to be judgmental and say some things are good or some things are bad, but if you're trying to create a reality that is fun and loving and bountiful and awesome, right? Calling it a fun night to go and watch people's heads be chopped off and killed and seeing someone going through the worst time of their life in a movie, in an entertainment movie, doing it for fun is something you should probably do very consciously if you do choose to do it. I'm sure that a lot of you might think about doing it and then think about this concept of, well, whatever it is that you're focusing on is what you're going to be bringing on in, in one way or another. You might not be the protagonist in this movie who needs to, you know, shoot up 20 people in order to get out alive. You might be the herald. You might be the person who needs to be fought, depending on what your reality matrix is, what you're running, and the paradigms that you are you are spending your time in and that leads to the next thing is dreaming rather than existing lazily <laughs> most of the time our mind is running in patterns that we're used to right so if you're wanting to create something new then that means you have to create something new from the inside I'm sure you've heard it said before that abundance is within abundance is within well yeah that's technically true but if you're not experiencing abundance around you then it's really hard to make that jump so one of the first things that you can do, for instance, is see what's abundant around you, especially since most of you guys who are attracted to this are going to be energy workers, so you'll understand this. For instance, say I was trying to manifest something right now. I'm sitting here in this field to give you another shot of it because it's awesome. And say I wanted to manifest something that I was not already abundant in, right? I could just look for something that I am abundant in. In this particular example, it could be the grass in this field. And so I could be saying, okay, well, then I am going to feel this grass. I'm going to feel its vibration and attune with it and then feel how it is spread out everywhere and abundant and doesn't have to be watered, doesn't have to be planted, is just here and is naturally here and its code is already running in the reality paradigm that I exist in right now in this moment. Okay, great. So what does it feel like for an energy to be running, clear, abundant? Okay, great. And so I take that code, right, and then superimpose it on the thing that I want. So if I want an abundance of, I don't know, it's the holidays. So say I want abundance of beautiful family and friends interaction, right? That wasn't right logic, but you know, I mean grammar, but you know what I'm saying. Beautiful interactions with my family and friends. So I've been thinking about a couple that I've had before, you know, like memories that I have and just let myself be all in that delicious place and then blast it forward on my timeline and then let it go and just come back. And so what we're talking about is law of attraction. Yes, true. But you got to put it all together because now it's time to decide what universe you're going to live in. And that's why it's important to find people who have heaven bubbles similar to yours. Maybe you have a heaven bubble that you've created. This Golden Gaia quest, aside from being a tour of hot springs, is also kind of becoming a tour of heaven bubbles. And I've seen them all over the country and in different ways. 
And if you can link with people whose heaven bubble is aligned with your own, then that is how you make another reality too. Because then when you have, for instance, something that you need advice or feedback on, and you call up one of the people in the heaven bubbles, similar to yours, and you talk to them about it, it's gonna be a lot different than when you used to talk to family and friends who may be more pessimistic, or who just did not necessarily share your view on how the world works. And so this is not just what comes from within you, it's from what you manifest around you and what you choose to listen to and what you choose to pay attention to. So when you're creating your new reality fabric, pay attention to the threads that make it up is really what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> and I'm a little scattered because, you know, it's a new place. There are going to be some really interesting assignments here, some stuff with the elementals, some stuff with bringing in new code. This is a very interestingly desolate desert here, finding lots of uh, bones around and antlers. And it's really interesting, but the energy... Yesterday when we pulled in, we were sitting out in the front yard kind of surveying the area. Tony said to me, those stumps right there just turned into into gravestones. I feel like we're in a graveyard. And granted, the, we're kind of, you know, an hour from the closest town, but the area that we are in, in, in Arizona, is on the ghost town trails. So it would make sense. There's a lot of energy here that corresponds with unreleased death, I guess. Uh, death that is kind of in the limbo state. And so I think a lot of the work here is going to be to dislodge that and let things continue. Which is, I guess, what this video is about too, dislodging old belief systems and bringing new ones. Anyway, guys, I'll let you go now. Oh, my new Paradigm Abundance class is starting on December 1st. I'll put the link in this video's description. <laughs> Much love. Go in peace. Love to you guys from Tucson. I'll show you the Black Mountains again because they're so beautiful and amazing. And I do plan on going over there. There's one spire right there that's been calling me. And there's also what looks like a watchtower up there that's been calling me. So we'll see if I actually make it there. I don't really know how the trails work, but I will find out. <laughs> Much love. Go in peace. Check in again very soon.